wait. Our stream will begin shortly. Hi everybody, um, really good to see you and uh, it, we're here in St. Gabriel's but I'm just a little bit lonely, uh, so sorry about that. We've got one or two other friends here who are helping to put the service together this morning um, but we just have what they call essential personnel uh, for now. Um, so uh, we're going to carry on because uh, that's, that's what we're what we going to do. Uh, we're going to have Holy Communion, we're going to have an act of remembrance as part of this service this morning. Uh, we're going to worship together, um, but in our own homes, um, and we're going to hear the Word of God from uh, John Wolfe, who's going to bring that to us uh, today. I am James. I'm the vicar. Um, should have said that earlier, really, um, but there we go. Um, I, do you know, I don't think I've put up... We haven't, have we? Haven't got a discussion point again. I think we should come up with one. So I'm open to suggestions. If you're on the chat and you have a good idea for a discussion point this morning, why don't you put it on the chat? Um, uh, otherwise, we'll have to think of something else. So we'll, um, let's do a few shout outs while we've got people coming in. It's good to see uh, Rose online, good to see Gladith online. Um, I'm going to say hi to Frances because I know she's watching even though she hasn't put on there and I know she'll tell me about that if I don't say hi. So hi to Frances. Um, lots of other people, Rachel, Alison, Richard, um, I can see just a few people, uh, Winsome, people working on the chat, it's really good. Um, I tell you what, good discussion point and you may or may not wish to reveal this, who this morning is doing as I suggested in the email and um, watching church in their pyjamas. Have we got any pyjama watches uh, logged in today? Let's have a look. Um, Marcus has also said, 
uh, what has everybody got to be thankful for today? That is also a really good discussion point. So either of those two, you can let us know whether you're watching in your pajamas or you can let us know something that you're thankful for. Uh, we would be really great to hear that. So uh, very good. Uh, Alison is watching Eating Porridge. Um, that is definitely uh, a thing you can do from home. That's very, very much easier. Um, all of my, all of the rest of my family that are at home uh, are in their pajamas. Pleased to be uh, said. I've got Zeke here with me helping on the words and things today. Uh, let's see. Oh, am I coming out of? Is that the camera I'm in? Oh, there we go. I'm out of there. Um, great. So um, that's all happening. Uh, let's see. A few others. Very good. Great, we'll let some of those comments come in and we can circle back to them a bit later in our service. Why don't we um, find a way now to engage with our worship? We're going to um, play you some worship, which we pre-recorded on Tuesday evening um, for this service. Um, and so it will very strangely look as if there's a whole band of musicians here, but I can assure anyone watching from the government or other, other reasons uh, that they are not. Uh, we do hope to have live worship as part of our stream in the coming weeks, but we want to make sure we're doing that with just essential personnel. So um, it will be slightly smaller scale, I would have thought, in coming weeks, but we're going to continue to do that. But for now, um, so why don't you uh, find a space in your home, however you're going to do that, uh, to worship. You may wish to stand, you may wish to sit, you may wish to sing, uh, you may wish to just watch and uh, connect with God in that way. But I encourage you to do uh, whatever you need to do to engage with worship now. Shut off any other distractions, um, try and find some space, uh, and let's try and worship together. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray now that you will come and that you will uh, enable us uh, to meet with you by your Spirit as we engage with this worship, as we sing and listen and engage with this music. Um, Lord, I pray that you will meet with us. And Lord, we do this because we desire to connect with you. We do this because we desire to give you glory and to give you goodness. So Father, we just ask that you would do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Great, let's worship. Everything. 
you to uh, Marcus and the band for that worship and uh, just as we uh, still in the presence of God uh, and at peace with him why don't we just uh, uh, enter a time of prayer Sarah is going to come and is going to lead us in our intercessions let's pray everlasting father Prince of Peace, thank you for the peace Jesus bought for us when he died on the cross. It did not come cheap. Our peace was costly. And today we thank you for the freedom and peace we experience in knowing you. Thank you for making the way for peace with you, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. If you're wearing a poppy, put your hand on it now. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. With these poppies, we're reminded of all those who lost their lives in the two world wars last century. We remember the horrors of war and the many who died a reminder that peace and freedom are sometimes very costly. Thank you that the benefits of that dearly bought peace persist today. Thank you for the freedom we enjoy in this country to worship you and to make choices about how we live our lives. Thank you for the peace, the freedom from war, that we experience day by day to go about our everyday lives. Thank you for the work and sacrifice of those who bought this for us long ago. Thank you for all who over time and in many countries across the world have worked in different ways, from military to political, from high profile to behind the scenes, to keep or bring about peace and freedom, who have given themselves for others and for something they felt was bigger than themselves. Such costly giving for others. Thank you, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, that they followed your desire for peace. I'd like us to pray now for countries and situations around the world where there isn't peace, places that need peace. Wherever you are, call out the names of some of those places. Call them out before God now. Prince of Peace, Give all those working for peace in whatever way, patience and persistence, energy and doggedness, to keep going when it seems they're getting nowhere. Use their efforts to bring peace, even in the most difficult situations. Make a way, Lord, make a way. And we think of situations where people are not free and justice is in short supply or flagrantly flouted. Lord, we pray for individual, national, and institutional changes of heart, changes of outlook and worldview, that people the world over may all be seen and treated as equal. 
thank you that everyone matters to you and you have compassion on all that you have made. We pray, Lord, that we may echo the children's song, I'm special. And because you made us and love us, may we and more and more people the world over treat each other as equally special because we are all made and loved by you. We pray for the good and continuing impact of the Black Lives Matter movement, seeking to right long-standing injustice in the world. Prince of Peace, fill our hearts and the hearts of many with peace. Prince of Peace, we pray for peace in our lives and among those we know. May we continue to, have pe to contribute to peace in our own relationships. Give us the desire to be at peace with our friends and neighbours, our family and colleagues. Think now of any you know who are living in a personal situation which needs peace or any who have a relationship with someone where they need to find a peaceful solution. Bring them before God in your mind now. Prince of Peace, fill their hearts with peace. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, we pray now for those who don't yet know peace with you don't know your forgiveness and your faithfulness. Thank you again for the costly sacrifice of Jesus and we pray for you to send your Holy Spirit to help us spread the good news of peace with you, bought for all, offered to all. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sarah, and uh, thank you for those prayers. And of course, uh, we will be uh, having an act of remembrance as part of this service. That will happen at around 11 o'clock, as close to 11 o'clock as I can get it. Um, so again, if you've got a poppy to hand, or if you haven't, you can visit the British Legion website and you can get a virtual poppy. Um, and you can also add a contribution uh, to their uh, online gallery of uh, remembrance there. So um, there are other ways of marking uh, this day if you do not have those to hand. So um, we're going to have a time of news now. I'm going to let you know about uh, some of the things that are happening up and coming at St. Gabriel's. Um, the first thing is we are going ahead with our handling loss uh, group, which is going to meet on Friday via Zoom. Uh, and that will start 7 p.m. Um, you can sign up for that on the website. Um, just uh, click through, go down to upcoming events. It should be one of the first ones that come up. Click on it and you can enter your details um, and that will let uh, the organisers know that you are doing. So we're organising that in conjunction with Christians Against Poverty. Uh, they've done a brilliant set of uh, videos called the Kickstarter series which are designed to enable um, some group discussion uh, to happen around different topics. So as the first sort of trial of this, uh, we thought we would do one about handling loss. As I'm aware, there's a number of people that have experienced losses of different kinds at the moment, be that bereavement, or uh, changes in job or unemployment situations, any kind of loss uh, of which we seem to be so surrounded uh, with the recent pandemic, um, it would be a good opportunity to come together, um, listen uh, to a few thoughts and to spend a few time, uh, minutes uh, talking with a few other people about uh, that topic. So um, do take advantage of that, please. That's this Friday um, and it's at 7 p.m. Uh, we're also uh, initiating, as part of this lockdown, we're joining together with the National Church and our bishops in an in initiative of prayer. And uh, the initiative of prayer, uh, which we should have a slide for, I think Zeke's on it. Come on, Zeke. Here we go. Yay, prayer. Um, so uh, we're going to be committing ourselves to prayer and fasting. Now, at home, I can tell you're all just groaning. Don't groan. Don't groan like the Israelites. Rejoice. Fasting! Okay, so we're going to do some prayer and fasting. And um, the idea is that uh, we're just going to create some extra spaces in our day to pray. 
and we're going to try and do that in community. So the idea is that you would uh, fast in a way that is appropriate to you. Um, so if uh, for me, I can tell you I'm going to try and fast my lunch on that Friday um, and spend the time I would have spent eating, praying. Um, so it's not an excuse for those of you working at home with your kids at school to just maximize the time and just work through lunch and therefore skip lunch and don't pray. That's kind of defeats the object. Uh, so if you're going to do that, uh, you need to take advantage of the time. Um, but I thought it'd be nice to gather together uh, in an evening using a Zoom call at 7.30 on a Thursday. And we'll do this thing which I've called fast prayer. Uh, it's fast prayer because you're fasting and you pray, and it's fast because it's not a full hour or 45 minute slot. It's a 30 minute slot. So the idea is that we'd have a short um, t time of prayer, probably framed around Compline, um, but giving everybody an opportunity to pray for different things as they feel fit to do. Um, so we're going to do that for every Thursday during lockdown. So at the moment, that's the next three Thursdays. Um, so if you want to get involved with that, you, you don't have to join the Zoom call. You don't have to connect to anything else. You could just take up your own fast during this time. It might be that you decide you want to fast something else. Um, but it's a good time to do it as we're getting, getting ready for Advent, which is getting ready for Christmas. We're getting ready to get ready. Um, there we go. Prayer and fasting. Um, also, it's not too late for you to join the Alpha course. So um, the Alpha course is running. Uh, we have a slide for it as well, I think. Uh, and uh, this is your last chance to sign up, though. So we've had the first session happened on Tuesday. It was really great, but I'm told uh, it's still uh, perfectly fine for uh, get new guests to join. Uh, so there's already a few people who I know couldn't make the first one and are looking forward to coming uh, to week two. Um, so you won't be uh, the only people coming for the first time. Why not sign up? Uh, you can do so online. Um, do make the most of that. Also, just an update from us on our uh, Black Lives Matter response, um, which again, we've got, there we go. Uh, so basically the PCC have commissioned a report uh, on race and equality. And we just wanted to let you as the church know, uh, we are keeping this at the front of our mind and that we are progressing our plans um, to try and address uh, some of the issues that have been raised in that report. Um, at the moment, we're going through as a staff team to see which areas we can execute straight away. And then we're going to be looking for ways of getting the whole community involved. So if um, you are interested in that or you'd like to know more, you can get in touch with myself or, uh, or contact Alison if you want to get a copy, an early copy of that report so you can see what's been discussed. We're more than happy to let you have that. Um, so do just get in touch if you'd like to do that. But you'll hear more about our different initiatives uh, in the next weeks and months. Great. Well, I thought perhaps it would be a good uh, opportunity to uh, do some birthdays. So... Uh, we didn't get to do this last week. So if there is anybody who has a birthday uh, in the month of November, can you... Oh, Katie's reminding me to plug English class on Zoom tomorrow night. Yes, in a late-breaking moment, the English classes will be occurring uh, Monday night on Zoom. Uh, I will get that updated on the website as well. Good job. Um, birthdays. Any birthdays, you've got to whack them in the chat uh, super quick. So November birthdays. Who have we got? Let's have a look. See if we've got any of those coming in. I'll tell you what, while the birthday requests are coming in, we're going to see this video from uh, Mariam. It's going to tell us all about what's happening with the children's ministry this week. Hi, everyone. So as you know, we won't be having in-person children's sessions um, at the moment, and there is no Zoom session today, but we do have some exciting activities for you. I'll post the link right now in the chat so you can find where um, those activities are. Today's story is the parable of the 10 bridesmaids. So if you want to know how that story goes, just click on the link. You can find it also on the um, under the Children and Youth um, page on the church website. Um, I'd love for you to explore that. Also, we're going to be counting down to Advent. It's an exciting time and we have um, just some learning points and a quick challenge for you to do each Sunday up until the very first Sunday of Advent. So here's a look at this week's countdown to Advent challenge. Which Christmas characters are behind the squares? If you think you know the answer, you can send them in to me by WhatsApp or by email, which you can find on the 
children and youth pages I mentioned earlier. There will be a prize for anyone who participates weekly and for an extra prize for anyone who gets all the answers correct. So have a go. Bye. Well, that is super exciting. Um, I'm already thinking about what that prize is going to be. So uh, if you're thinking that way as well, then perhaps you can uh, get involved with that challenge. There's going to be a new challenge every week. So thanks for that, Marion. Well, let's say happy birthday to a few people. So uh, it's going to be, let's have a little look. We've got uh, Quezzy's birthday is going to be this month. We've got Arizona um, turning seven. We've got uh, Anita's birthday. Uh, Daniel, Daniel Bodie, uh, and Debbie's mum's birthday as well. Definitely a, uh, uh, a November one there. Fantastic. And uh, that's excellent. And any others? And Marina as well. So fantastic. Have I got everybody? Let's see. No, I think we're there. Very good. So fantastic. Well, let's wish all of those people a happy birthday for this month. And why don't we pray? for all of them now. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will bless all of these um, people who have their birthdays in November. God, I pray that you would uh, encourage them and bless them. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, the church clock is now striking 11, and so we're going to now have our moment of remembrance.
so, Lord, we turn to you. We turn to you for hope. We cry out for the anguish of war and we recognise the sacrifice of those who gave everything for our freedoms. But Lord, we also recognise this is a broken world. And in our own brokenness, we come before you in confession. So let us pray. Turn to us again, O God, our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your salvation is near for those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen us by your Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Great. One more quick um, notice to make, uh, which is that uh, we would normally in the building be taking an offering. Um, so it stands to reason, I think we've got, uh, you might have to skip back to find the, oh, well done. That's our little offering uh, notice. So if you are uh, at home and you wish to give, you'd normally give uh, physically, but you want to give a different way, you can try the donation by smartphone. Of course, our regular means of giving are also available, and you can visit the church website for full details. Um, we don't, at the moment, have a means for you to drop off cash offerings uh, in the week, um, but as we figure out how we're going to operate a bit more in this current lockdown, we shall let you know um, how we're able to do that, uh, when we're able to do that. Great. Good. So, we're going to, I think, have our readings now. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything else. Yeah, readings. Today's Bible reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at verse 13 to verse 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Christ died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the, word, to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from the heaven with a loud command, and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of the Lord. 
Great. And uh, we have uh, John here with us, who is going to share God's word. John, can I pray for you? Well, you could say no, but I'm going to pray for you anyway. <laughs> uh, Lord, uh, just thank you for John. Thank you uh, for his ministry amongst us. Thank you for the words that he's prepared. And we pray that they would be a blessing for us as he reads them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, James. And uh, welcome uh, ev uh, everyone uh, virtually. Uh, to introduce myself, I'm uh, John Wolfe, a member of the congregation uh, here at St. Gabriel's, member of the PCC, and uh, also in my uh, day job, I'm a historian of the church and of religion. And it's uh, that that I want to use as a starting point, as on this Remembrance Sunday, I think it's good to be thinking about the past, the present, and the future as we come in these readings to think uh, particularly about uh, Jesus' second coming, Jesus' return at a time uh, or season that we don't yet know. But at the beginning, I uh, reflect a bit uh, on the past and the uh, experience of one of the most popular preachers in mid-19th century London, who was a man called John Cumming. And uh, perhaps appropriately for his name, he uh, was rather obsessed with the second coming of Jesus. And he made confident predictions that uh, Jesus' second coming and the end of the world would occur sometime between 1848 and 1867. Cummings' predictions seemed credible in what were turbulent times, perhaps not wholly unlike our own. Uh, there were revolutions in Europe in 1848, war between Britain, France, and Russia in the Crimea between 1854 and 1856, and a civil war in the United States in the early 1860s. Also, there was a pandemic raging. Cholera, uh, which was the uh, disease that produced that pandemic, is estimated to have killed over 50,000 people in England and Wales in 1848 and 1848 alone. And that's at a time when the total population uh, was around a third of what it is today. So with wars, revolutions, pandemic, it's easy to believe, it must have been easy to believe coming when he thought that the end times were imminent. Unfortunately for coming, as 1867 approached and Jesus still hadn't returned, his critics got wind of the fact that he'd recently negotiated a 21-year lease on his house. It therefore seemed that he didn't really believe his own predictions. Certainly after 1867, the time when he'd uh, said that Jesus would return, his popularity seriously declined. And by the time he retired in 1879, his congregation was much reduced. John Cumming was just one in a long line of Christian leaders over the last 2,000 years who have misinterpreted biblical prophecy to predict a certain date uh, very specifically, or at least a period, for Jesus' second coming. Such predictions both excite believers and frighten people uh, when the dating question is in the future, but inevitably, when the date they've confidently predicted passes by, their credibility rather rapidly evaporates. So with that in mind, let's look now at what Jesus himself and Paul had to say about the second coming in the passages which were read to us just now. The parable of the ten virgins in Matthew chapter 25 follows immediately after the previous chapter in which Jesus gives quite extended teaching on the end times. And Jesus says in chapter 24, verse 36, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, nor the Father. And I suggest that if Cumming and others had taken that verse as seriously as they take 
uh, as they took some of the mathematical calculations uh, which they were making on the, verse, on the basis of rather obscure verses in Daniel and Revelation. They might have saved themselves quite a bit of trouble. Then, in the parable of the ten virgins or bridesmaids, Jesus goes on to give us a vivid image to underline that teaching. As I understand it, in a first century Jewish wedding, the bridegroom would go to the bride's house after dark to collect her, and there would then be a procession through the streets of a town or village back to his house. And crucially, everyone in that procession was expected to carry a light. And that was a means whereby, practically, you could distinguish invited guests from people who just joined the uh, procession and wanted to gate crash the wedding banquet, or people who were just uh, spectators. So the five virgins who don't have enough oil for their lamps are indeed foolish. They're either just thoughtless, or perhaps they were counting on the bridegroom arriving quickly, just as some throughout history have expected Jesus to return in the very near future. So when the bridegroom refuses to let them into the banquet, he may sound harsh, but the point Jesus is making is that they've failed in one of the most basic duties of a wedding guest. It's like the uh, breast man forgetting to turn up with a ring. It's no good, Jesus implies, rushing to prepare ourselves for his second coming when we realize that it's imminent. We must always be prepared for it. But on the other hand, I think it's interesting that in the parable, the wise virgins, as well as the foolish virgins, fall asleep while they're waiting for the bridegroom to come. Jesus doesn't seem to be saying that we should always be in a heightened state of alertness and expectation, expecting him to come back at any moment. Rather, we need to be prepared, but to be prepared to wait. Indeed, unlike the virgins in the parable, not just for hours, but as the church has waited for centuries and now for millennia. So when it does happen, what will the second coming be like? And in 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul gives us a picture. He's, of course, attempting to describe the indescribable. And I don't think we should take details such as the trumpet call and being caught up in the clouds absolutely literally. But two things are very clear from Paul's account. The first is that when the second coming does happen, it will be a cosmic, unmistakable event. So it's important that we don't believe any suggestions that it has already happened and that Jesus is already walking this earth in secret or unrecognized. And false claims of that nature have also misled many people in the past. But the second point on which Paul is giving powerful reassurance is that the dead as well as the living will be involved. So we don't need to worry, either for ourselves or for those whom we love who have already passed away, that those who have died by the time the second coming happens will miss out. They won't miss out, provided, as Paul puts it, that they have died in Christ. That is, they have previously accepted Jesus into their lives. To come back to the foolish virgins, their problem wasn't that they fell asleep, but that they had not prepared themselves appropriately for the wedding banquet before they did so. So what are the implications for us today? The message of the parable is that we should live prepared and expectant for Jesus' return, but not obsessed by it. It doesn't make sense to abandon everyday life and wait for Jesus on the mountaintops, because it's likely to be a long, and if we take the mountaintops literally, very cold wait. Indeed, John Cumming defended himself against those who criticised him for taking out the lease on his house, 
by pointing out that he couldn't be absolutely sure of his own timing. In the meantime, he had to provide for his normal family life to continue by keeping a roof over, over their heads. On the other hand, even if we don't expect Jesus to return soon, or even in our own lifetimes, the one certainty we do need to prepare for is our own death. After that, whether immediately or when the second coming does occur, we shall indeed meet with Jesus and, as Paul puts it, be with the Lord forever. I think one of the interesting consequences of the current pandemic is that it brings us back closer to the mindset of earlier historical periods when even younger people were very much aware that they could die soon and unexpectedly. And that awareness, of course, was also a feature of people's experience in the two world wars, whether they were soldiers in the trenches in World War I or civilians at home in World War II facing the danger of bombing raids. And a former president of the United States, Dwight Eisenhower, who was also a World War II general, popularized the saying that there were no atheists in foxholes. And I should explain that the kind of foxholes Eisenhower was referring to were not the kind inhabited by uh, animals with long bushy tails, but rather military earthworks that were used to protect soldiers from enemy fire. Of course, we shouldn't hold God responsible for the human tragedy and loss uh, that lies behind the circumstances of war and indeed of pandemics. But we should recognize that he can also use them as a moment of spiritual opportunity. As Christians, we're made more aware of the fragility and impermanence of life as we know it. And we're encouraged to live in the light of Christ's return and the knowledge of our own eventual death. And others outside the church who don't yet know Jesus may well be similarly prompted to a spiritual searching for meaning beyond this life. And that surely, if we can take it, is an opportunity for witness and evangelism. Last Sunday was All Saints Day, and we celebrated faithful Christian people, living and dead, who have followed what James in his sermon described as a recipe for sainthood, uh, referring particularly to the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. Today, on Remembrance Sunday, we continue to remember and to celebrate those who have gone before us, but our emphasis is a different one. Of course, not all those who died in the two world wars and the conflict since were believing Christians. Many of them were, though, including the former members of, uh, of this church who are commemorated on the First World War War of Honor and on the several memorial tablets around the church, which we saw on screen uh, during the two-minute silence. There's a suggestion sometimes made on Remembrance Sunday that death in war is itself a route to sal a eternal salvation. But that is a, a nationalistic and militaristic distortion of Christian teaching. Nevertheless, remembrance is about honoring the sacrifice of those of all creeds and none who laid down their lives in the service of others. And in the context of the pandemic, we should surely extend that remembrance, not just to soldiers, sailors, and airmen, but also, in particular, to doctors, nurses, and other health workers who have died as a result of treating others. And remember that Jesus, in another of his most memorable parables, the Good Samaritan, recognized the value of the compassionate and potentially self-sacrificial actions of those outside the committed uh, religious circles of his day. So, as I close on this Remembrance Sunday, we have much both to remember and to look forward to. We remember Jesus' teaching about his own return and how we should live in the meantime. We remember the sacrifice and dedication of men and women who have gone before us. 
In the face of another lockdown, we live in a present that may feel more chaotic and insecure than usual. But we look forward to the future promise of Jesus' return and to our meeting with him, whatever form that will take. We look forward, too, to the assurance that then, in the words of Revelation 21, verse 4, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Thank you, John. Why don't we just take a moment to uh, reflect on what John has shared with us, and particularly perhaps casting to mind our own experiences. Do you feel like you have done those preparations? Do you feel like you have filled your lamp? Maybe some of you feel like your lamp's a bit low right now, and maybe that's, uh, maybe that's just because of all of the things that are going on around us. Perhaps uh, we just need the opportunity to refocus our hearts and our minds on what um, Christ would have for us, what he would do. And so we just want to take that opportunity to allow God to fill us. You know, oil is a, is a symbol of his spirit. So why don't we just ask God's spirit to come now and to fill us. Where we're feeling uh, broken or damaged, where we're feeling um, less than prepared. And we do prepare particularly for those for whom um, that preparation, whilst we don't know the hour, uh, we know that our own death is certain. And, and I just get a sense there are one or two who are particularly anxious about their own mortality at the moment. And, um, and let's just pray uh, now for those. Heavenly Father, just pray that anyone that's watching or listening today who's concerned about their own mortality, let them not be concerned because they have you as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, we just pray now, if there's any further preparation to be done, that you would release that preparation. Lest, if we fall asleep, we fall asleep fully prepared. I just pray that in Jesus' name. And Lord, for, for those known to us whom we might uh, be praying for at this time, who may be close uh, or in certainly in a, in a dangerous uh, situation. I just want to lift them up now as well. And we also just lift up those who are serving our country uh, in different armed forces at home or abroad. And we pray uh, for those chaplains who serve in those forces, and we pray that faith would still uh, shape and uh, direct those who are involved in those military services. We pray for Christians that are serving in those services across the world, and we ask that they too would have the same level of faith that was conjured up and is so vivid in our memories of the First and Second World Wars. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Great. Well, we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, have communion now. And uh, sadly, you won't be able to participate from home, but please do uh, follow along with the responses as you're able, and we're going to sing after that as well. So first, the peace. Uh, if you're in a household and you're watching together, uh, you could greet one another with a sign of peace uh, in a moment. So let me pray. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So if you're at home at the moment, you can offer one another a sign of peace. Uh, I'm going to go and set the communion table. Friends, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right 
our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, or Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because in him you have received us as your sons and daughters, joined in one fellowship with the saints and made us citizens of your kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and with this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We say together, Praising, praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Let's pray together the words that our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So now the members of the team that are here will receive communion and then we will continue with our service. So we say this post-communion prayer together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies 
to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Great. We're going to sing together now, and uh, so why don't you uh, stand or uh, sit wherever you are, find your space for worship, um, and let the band lead us in a final song together. You make it easy to love you. You are good and you are kind You bring joy into my life You make it easy to trust you You have never left my side You've been faithful every time All I want is you Jesus oh. God, we thank you that we can follow you. We thank you that we can find you and that you guide us. And just a reminder, if there is anyone that uh, perhaps 
uh, after listening to the words that John spoke or um, any of the other content from the service who would like prayer ministry today. Um, just uh, we've reinitiated our Zoom prayer rooms uh, for this season um, so that there are uh, a number of people who are waiting now in that Zoom room. And if I check the chat, we should be able to get, yeah, excellent, Alison is on that. Uh, so the, um, there's the details have gone in there. If you would like prayer for any reason, um, and you would like someone else to pray with you, that is your means uh, of doing that. So please do make use of that. Um, uh, you can connect with that. That's open now, uh, and it would be good uh, for some of you to head there if you need to. Um, brilliant. Well, why don't we just pray a final prayer of blessing before we go. So may God give to you and all those whom you love his comfort and his peace his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Uh, it's been really good to do this together, and we'll be back again this time next week uh, with another online service. Uh, and again, we'll, uh, I'll be in touch. If you want to receive our weekly email or anything like that, or if you're new, I didn't even say hello to you if you're new, uh, you can get in touch with us, hello at st-gabriels.org, or you can head to the St. Gabriel's website uh, and find the contact us bit, which I discovered is a bit buried, but you'll find it. Um, you can sign up for news and information from us and our weekly email. Great, um, good uh, to be with you, and we'll see you again next week.